Hi, welcome to this wonderful session of calculus. So now here we are going to discuss uh, the average rate of change between two points on a curve. And later on, we're gonna look onto the instantaneous rate of change on a curve, not between two points, okay? So now before we can even start doing some problem solving, we're gonna look onto the basics first, okay? So let us start with the basics first and see where is everything is actually coming from. Now, let us talk about all of the basics of mathematics. So now what you see here, it is a curve, the function, which is a function of f, okay? The blue graph here is a function of f. Now, a function of f, you can simply tell that this function it is not a linear function, but it is. it could be a exponential function, which is most definitely a curve. Okay, or it could be a restriction, one of the one of the restrictions of a parabolic function. But what matters is what you see on this screen over here, it is a curve. Now, mathematically, when you talked about the functions, this is what I want you to remind you. Okay. Mathematically, let's say we have a Cartesian plane, just like this one that you see here on the board. Okay, but do not forget your Cartesian plane has y-axis and x exists, okay? Let me try to draw a function, a linear function on this Cartesian plane. Say for an example, you are given a linear function that moves like this, okay? Let me just try to uh, correct that because it doesn't even look like a linear function. I'll try, uh, I'll try this time to write, let's say this, aha, let's say this, it is your linear function provided to you, okay? So I'll call this linear function graph of g of x, or you can just call it graph of g because already I have f. So now let's say on this linear function, I have various points, okay? And let's say maybe on this linear function, I'll call this point point A, I'll call this point point B, I'll call this point point C, yeah. I'll call this point, point D, okay? There are many points that are found on this function. I'll just consider only these two, uh, only these four points on this linear function, okay? So now, mathematically, if I if I task you to determine the gradient, now I'm going to talk about the gradient because remember, I am doing average rate of change, which is average, or you can simply call it average gradient, okay? So if I say to you, determine the gradient of this linear function of G of X, how are you going to determine its uh, gradient? Now, mathematically, this is what you know. To determine the gradient of a linear function, you're simply going to say change in y divided by change in x, right? So that means if I say to you, I have a specific portion, I want you to focus on portion uh, AB, and I say to you, determine the gradient of portion AB. So how are you going to do that? You're gonna say y of a or b, either way, you're gonna say y of a subtract y of b, divide by x of a subtract x of b. And then if I say to you, let's focus on portion, uh, portion cd and determine the gradient of portion cd, you're gonna say y of c subtract y of d, divide by x of c subtract x of d. This is what you are most definitely going to use to determine the gradient of cd. But the truth is, for a fact that all of these points are on a linear or a straight line function, that means the gradient of ab, it is going to be the same as gradient of cd. Why? Because all of these points are collinear. They are situated on same linear graph then the gradient is the same. That means gradient of AB, gradient of CD, it corresponds with the gradient of the whole function. That means graph of G has a steady constant gradient throughout. So that means the gradient of G will always remain the same, will always be constant because it is a linear function. Remember, this is a Cartesian plane and we have a function. Now let's jump here. When we jump on this uh, Cartesian plane, we see that we have a function. But the problem is this function of f, it is not the same as the function of g. Why? Simply because this is a curve and this is a linear function. 
Now, let's talk about the gradient of a curve. Is it possible for me to say, maybe here I have point D, here I have point C. Is it possible for me to determine gradient of D, A, and B, C? And I conclude by saying the gradient is the same, meaning the gradient of D, B, uh, the gradient of D, A is the same as gradient of B, C. Is that going to be the same? It depends. It depends. It can be the same depending on numerical values you used. But now here's the thing. When you are given or provided with a curve like this, we cannot just determine the gradient of the whole curve using only two or one gradient. Here, to determine the gradient of the whole linear function, you can use one of the two points. It does not matter, B, C, B, D, A, B, A. It does not matter which two points you use to determine the gradient, and the gradient will be the same. But here, it is not possible to say using two points will give the gradient of F. No. Now, this is where we are going to involve calculus, okay? Because we have a curve, the surface. Remember, calculus, it is a map that helps us to determine the gradient of curved objects or curved surfaces. Calculus, it is a mathematics that helps us to determine the area of curved surfaces. Again, calculus, it is a mathematics or a branch of a mathematics that helps us to determine the motion of falling objects, okay? So now, because here we are doing our differential calculus, we're just going to talk about the curve, okay? How to determine the gradient of a curve, okay? Because what you see is that the gradient here, it does not change, it is constant throughout. But the problem about this curve is that at the point D, at the point A, at the point C, uh, sorry, B, and at the point C, the gradients are not the same. Because if I were to draw a tangent, let's say I were to draw a tangent at this curve, remember tangent, it is a line that touches a graph only at one point. If I were to draw a tangent at this point, and I were to draw a tangent at point A, I were to draw a tangent at point B, can you see what is happening with the slope of my tangent? The tangent it is increasing in slope or in steepness, okay? The tangent, it is increasing. So that means the gradient of the whole function, which is f, it is increasing as you move upwards, meaning it is not constant or it is not the same. In order for me to know the gradient of this, this is where, like I said, we're, gonna do, we're going to employ calculus, okay? So now let's talk about the average rate of change between two points on a curve, which is this curve. Now we have two given points, okay? We have two given points, which is A and B, right? Now, if I say to you, determine the average rate of change, this is the formula that we are going to use, which is the same formula that we use to determine the gradient on a linear function. But here, we're not gonna call, yes, it is true, if I am going to determine the average uh, rate of change on this curve of uh, F, if I were to draw a straight line that passes through point A and point B, that straight line, like I said, is a straight line. That straight line will have a constant gradient throughout. But that gradient, it is not a gradient of F, but rather it is the average gradient of F. Okay? Do not confuse that. And I hope that is making sense. Right. So now, that means, how am I going to determine the average rate of change between two points on a curve? Don't forget, average rate it is the gradient of a linear function. It's not the gradient of F. It's average gradient of F. I hope that is making sense. Now, how am I going to do that? Now, remember, I said to you, to determine the average rate of change of this f, we're going to use change in y over change in x, whereby change in y is given by y2 subtract y1 divided by x2 subtract x1. Yes, because I'm using two points, a and b. So I'm going to take point a to be my point 1, and then my point uh, b, I will take it or consider it to be 
point two. Now, what are the coordinates of, let's start with A. What are the coordinates of point A? So these are the coordinates of point A, which is given in a coordinate system by X and Y. Now the X of A is most definitely the value of X. And then the Y of A, it's given by the form of notation of a function, which is F of X. Okay. Right. Now, what are coordinates of point two, which is in this case point B? Now, coordinates of point two, which is B, my X, it is most definitely given to be X plus H. And therefore, my Y, it is given by that, which is F of X plus H. Okay, these are my points, which is point one and point two. Now, this is what is happening. When you determine the average rate of change of a curve, it's more or less like using a gradient. And when you use a gradient formula, you consider two points in this case, which is point one and point two, which is A and B. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do my, I'm, I'm just going to perform my direct substitution, whereby remember this is Y2, Y2 is from point two, so point two, here we have y, which is f at x plus h. So that means I'm going to substitute my f at x plus h, subtract from the e formula. What is y1? y1 from point 1, which is f of x. Divide by what is x2? x2 is from point 2, which is given by x plus h. Uh, subtract from the formula. And therefore, what is uh, x1 from point 1, it's most definitely going to be an x. Therefore, when I perform my further simplification, average rate of change of curve, of this curve, which is given by function f, will be equals to, in a formula form, when I have f of x plus h, subtract f of x. Divide, remember this and this, they're gonna fall off and therefore I remain with H. Therefore this, it is a formula that we can say or use to determine the average rate of change between two points on a curve. Okay, remember average rate of change, it is the what? It is the gradient of a linear function between two points. But this gradient that you're gonna get, say for an example, you substitute your numerical values and then you get your average rate of change to be positive two. I'm just making an example. You get your average rate of change to be positive two. So that positive two, it does not mean it is the gradient of the whole curve. Remember, this is a linear function. So the gradient that you're going to get does not correspond with the gradient of the whole function. But here, if you are determining uh, the gradient of point one and point two, the very same gradient that you got over here will be the gradient of the whole linear function. Be careful of that. Okay? Right. So now let us do an example involving the very same principle. Now, example. Number one, it says to us, consider the function f, which uh, f of x, which is equal to 3x squared minus 2x, determine the average. Ah, my question says determine the average gradient. Remember, it is called the average gradient, or it is also called the average rate of change. It's the same thing, okay? Therefore, now this is what I want you to pay attention. I want you to understand these things when solving questions, okay? They say, consider the function, which is this. What type of function do we have? Is this linear function? No, it's not linear function. If this was a linear function, we can't say the average gradient. But for the fact that this is a parabolic function because we know that parabola has second highest degree. Its highest degree is to the power of two. So that means this. It's a parabola, it's a parabolic function. I'm sorry about my drawing, but it's a parabolic function, which is happy by value of A, it's positive, all right? So parabola, it is a graph that is curvaceous, meaning it has curve. So that means we can determine the average gradient on a curve. We, that's what we know from the basics that we have learned. So now 1.1, it says uh, between X is equals to two and X is equals to four. Right. To perform calculations of 1.1, 1 
when you want to determine the gradient, irrespective whether it's average of a uh, average gradient on a curve or a gradient on a linear function, all the times so when you perform calculations, you need two points most of the times. Okay, um, but you'll see as time goes by, you're not always gonna need two points. We're gonna do first principle, but not yet first derivative, but not yet. So now here to determine the average gradient, we're gonna need two points. Okay. So we're going to need point one and point two with complete set of coordinates. So point one in this case is given by x is equals to two, but we do not know the numerical value of um of this. Uh, we do not know the numerical value of, 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 of why that corresponds with this x. Same applies to x is equals to four. We do not know the numerical value of uh, y that corresponds with this x. That means we're gonna have to calculate it first, okay? So considering our function, we're gonna determine f at x, in this case, whereby x is equals to two, we're gonna determine f at two, which is equals to from the function, we have three, we substitute two over there to the power of two, subtract two, we substitute two over there, and then we have to uh, punch this on our calculator. So two to the power of two is four, four multiplied by two, uh, four multiplied by three is 12, and then 12 subtract four, it's most definitely going to be eight, okay? Our x value is two, our y value is uh, uh, eight. So let me write it in a coordinate form so that we do not get confusion. So here we have two is to eight, and I'll call this point point. Uh, you can call it one or two. It's up to you. I'll call it point one because it's the first one that we started with. And therefore, we're going also going to determine f at x is equals to four, meaning we want to determine f at four. So we're gonna utilize the very same equation. So here we substitute four to the power of two, subtract two, we substitute four, and then how much do we get? Four to the power of two, it's 16, 16 to the power of three, I think it's 48. 16 multiply, let me do my calculator, multiply by three. Yes, it's 48, 48 subtract eight, 48 subtract eight is 40. So that means here, our corresponding y value to this x value will be equals to 40. So in a coordinate form, my x is equals to 4, and then my y is equals to 40. Therefore, I'll call this point, point 2. Now, I want to determine the average gradient between these two points. So I would assume, okay, let me just try to do this. Let me just try to do this. Let me erase this. Uh, because I love... When you do calculations, I want you to understand you do not just perform calculations without even understanding what you are doing. So I would assume over this graph, it looks like this, okay? So where x is equals to two, uh, let me just extend it over there. I'll say here, x is equals to two, and then maybe somewhere else here, x is equals to four, okay? So that means we want to determine the average gradient between these two points, which is two and the four within this portion, okay, on this curve, okay? So now, how are we going to do that? Oh, we can also write the curve on, it does not matter where you wrote the curve. So now, to determine the average gradient, we're gonna say the average gradient is equal to y2 subtract y1 divide by x2 subtract x1. And therefore, what is numerical value of y2 from point 2? It's going to be 40. And then y1 uh, from point 1 is going to be uh, 8. And then uh, x2 from point 2 is going to be 4. And then x1 from point 1 is going to be positive 2. And therefore, when we punch this on our calculator, uh, 40 subtract 8, I think it's 16, let me do it. So you're gonna say 40 subtract 8, you know, to confirm. Sometimes we even add one plus one on calculator to confirm. We don't want mistakes, it's 16. So that means our answer here will be most definitely 16. So the average gradient, it's a numerical value of 16. The average gradient between these two points, which is two is to eight and four is to four, will correspond with 16. That will be number 1.1. .1. Now, 1.2, it says to us the very same statement, but over this interval now, whereby x, uh, it's negative 3 and positive 2, whereby uh, x value is included, 
So that means we're gonna fit just like this thing, this question and these questions are exactly the same. The difference is that the notations are not the same or the presentations are not the same. Here you are given in the form of interval, okay? So you will be given in the form of interval between negative three and negative uh, two. Just gonna perform the very same thing that we did though. So we're gonna determine uh, F at negative three. So that means here, we're gonna say we have three, we substitute negative three over here from our function squared, minus two multiplied by negative three. And therefore we punch that on our calculator. Three, negative three to the power of two, minus two, sorry, I made a mistake. Three, negative three to the power of two, minus two, minus three. So here we have 33. And therefore, let's determine F at, sorry, negative two. So here we have three, we have negative two squared, uh, subtract two, multiply by negative two, and then we punch this on our calculator. So we just punch a negative two in the calculator. Normally easy to think, just wanna punch this and get down with it. 16, we get positive 16, okay? So in a coordinate form, once more again, the coordinate for this point is going to be negative 3 is to 33. Uh, we're going to have here negative 2 is to positive 16. I'll call this point 1 and I'll call this point 2. Now let us determine the average gradient. There is something disturbing, but it's like so here we have our uh, y2 minus y1 divide by x2 minus x1. Now, what is y2? We're gonna take it from point two, 16. What is y1 from point one, 33. Therefore, what is x2, negative two. And therefore, uh, what is x1 from point one? It's negative, it's gonna be positive three. And therefore, when you punch this on our calculator, uh, at the bottom is going to be positive one. I'm just going to say 16 divided by 33. I subtract uh, 33 is negative 17. So our gradient over here is going to be negative 17. It's a negative gradient. It's a negative slope. So that means the average gradient for 1.2 will be negative 17. Okay. So that's how we apply the very same basic that we have already talked about. Now let's talk about the instantaneous rate of change, okay? When you talk about instantaneous rate of change, remember, we have discussed the average rate of change between two points on a curve, literally between, between two points, there is a point, there is a point, point A, point B, this is a curve, right? So if I draw a linear function like this, this linear function, the gradient of this linear function will represent what? Will represent the average rate of change between these two points of this curve. So when you talk about the instant, instant, it is instantly at one point. So when you talk about an instantaneous rate of change or instantaneous gradient, remember, rate of change simply means gradient. So when you talk about an instant gradient, instant gradient or instantaneous gradient. What type of a gradient are we talking about? Say, for example, you are also given a curve, okay? This is point A, just like this graph. This is point A. Uh, this is point B. So when I want to determine the gradient only at one point, instantaneous rate of change, it's whereby we use only one point, okay? It's whereby we're going to use only one point. But now how are we going to do that? So if I have point A over here and then I have a tangent over here, now this is what I want you to understand. This is a secant because it cuts my curves at two points. But this is a tangent because it cuts my point only at, uh, my, my, my curve only at one point, okay? Right. So now, when you talk about instantaneous rate of change, I'm saying to you, it is the gradient of a function at the point. Okay, let me just write it over here. I didn't write it. Gradient 
of a tangent. Okay, it's a it's a gradient of a of a tangent. Okay, at any point on curve on a curve. Okay, so that means if I have a tangent here and then this uh, tangent passes through this curve, this is instantaneous rate of change. We call this uh, the gradient of this tangent, the gradient. Remember, this is a linear function. Y is equal to mx plus c. The gradient of this tangent at this point, which is point A, the gradient of this, it is also called the instantaneous rate of change. Does it make sense? Right. So now, from what we have learned, which is here, from what we have learned, we manipulated these two points to determine the gradient in this form using this formula. Now, this is where I'm going to need this formula so that you can understand the other principles. So now, instantaneous rate of change, it is given by this equation. But I want you to pay attention when we talk about the instantaneous rate of change. Now we're introducing the limits. Because remember, limits is part and parcel of calculus. So this is where we are going to talk about the limits which we've discussed in our first semester. So now, as the second point moves closer to the first point, H tends to approach zero from this formula or expression that is provided to you. Now, I'm going back to where we started. Okay, this is a formula that I have just showed you when I was talking about the instantaneous. But the thing is about this formula, there is a limit missing here. Okay, one of the reasons why am I going back to this one? Because I want to utilize the very same diagram. Okay, now look. SH, okay, let me, okay, you know what? Let me draw it, it's fine. Now, this is what is happening. Say we have that curve once more again. And therefore, here we have x. And then here we have x plus h. Okay. So now, this is what is happening. As the second point, remember here we have a point, which is, was point B, and I said it's point 2. We have point A, which I now called it point uh, 1. As this second point moves closer and closer and closer to the first point, which is point 1, what is happening to the numerical value of H? The numerical value of H tends to approach 0. It tends to decrease towards 0. Because remember, if here maybe it was 2, and then here most of it is going to be 2 plus any number, which is h. So that means from this point, uh, from this point a moving towards point 2, the value of h increases. Here the value of h is 0. Here the value of h is 1. Here the value of h is 2. Maybe here the value of h is 3. If the value of h here is 3, it's going to be 2 plus 3, it's going to be 5. That means x at this point is 5, x at this point at that point is 2. But now, if this second point moves closer to point 1, what is happening? The values of x decreases, right? But what is happening with the value of h? From 3, from 3, it moves to 2, it moves to 1, until it gets to 0, which is 2.2. .2. Okay? Right, so as the second point moves closer to the first point, H tends to approach zero. Now, therefore, at this point, once more again, at this point, once more again, which is point two, I mean, sorry, point one, that means if this point moves here, we're going to have what we call a tangent, okay? We're going to have what you call a tangent, which is a linear function. Now, the gradient of this tangent... Uh, 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 is going to be how much? It's going to be equals to this expression over here. That means 
the gradient of a tangent at point one will be equals to limit as h tends to approach zero limit of what of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h tends to approach zero so the gradient of a tangent at point one will be equals to this formula now this formula is also useful when we're going to do um uh, uh, first derivative, whereby we can simply use a first principle. Okay, we're going to use first principle doing first derivative using the very same formula. So first derivative, I'll tell you as time goes by, that first derivative, uh, um, 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 we use it to calculate the gradient of a tangent at any point of a curve, okay, which is what I have already discussed here as a basic, okay? So this is what we use to determine the gradient of a tangent at point P or any, at any point of our curve, okay? So now we have example here which says to us, find the instantaneous rate of change of F at X is equals to five X squared. Ha! Huh. Now this is what is happening. You are given a function, right? You are given a function F of X is equals to five X squared. And they want you to determine the average rate of change using this graph only. Okay, not average rate. They want you to determine the instantaneous rate of change using this function only. This is a curve. So we want to see that. Okay, I'll explain. Let me just do it. So how are we going to determine the instantaneous rate of change of this function? Aha, this is what you're going to do. You're going to use the very same formula, okay? Uh, which is a uh, limit of f of x plus h minus f of x divide by h as h tends to approach zero. So this is what you're going to determine, okay? But first, before we determine this, we're gonna have to determine f at x plus h. We're gonna have to determine f of x, which is already provided to us, okay? Right, so now what is, let's do it, uh, aside let's determine f at x first uh, f at x plus h so now f at x plus h will be equals to i'm going to take my function whereby i see x now i'm gonna plug x plus h so that means here i have five aha i see x that means i'm gonna plug x plus h to the power of two and therefore i perform my mathematics by expanding this so uh, x to the power of two it's x to the power of two x multiplied by h is x h multiplied by two it's two x h and then h to the power of two it's gonna be h squared therefore i'm gonna have five x squared i'm gonna have uh 10 x h i'm gonna have five h squared okay so this it is f at x plus h remember questions say to us find the instantaneous rate of change of this function so this is what we are looking for okay instantaneous rate of change so i'm using this formula i'm using this formula and if i'm going to say limit what is f at x plus h i have already determined it in terms of x and h it's gonna be five x squared plus 10 x h plus 5 h squared subtract what is f at x it is already provided to be 5 x squared divide by my h as h tends to approach zero now from the limits this is what you have learned in, in first semester you cannot just do a direct substitution because here it's going to be math error it's going to be undefined so you're going to perform your calculations first because uh, factorize whatever that's possible for you before you can do your direct substitution so i'm gonna continue with my limit as h tends to approach zero and therefore this and this they're gonna fall off and then i left with this so i'm gonna take already i'm gonna take h out as a common factor so that means i have h here i'm gonna left with 10 x and then there i'm gonna left with five divide by h now this h cancels this h now i can do my direct substitution um remember here we have h Okay, remember I took only one H from there. It's going to be H. Now I'm going to do my direct substitution. I no longer write this. So I'm going to say 10X plus 5. Show that you substituted your value of uh, H to be 0. And therefore, when you 
perform further calculations, uh, you're going to have 10x multiplied by 0. So 5 multiplied by 0 is 0, and therefore your answer, which is um, instantaneous rate of change, okay? This is instantaneous rate of change of this uh, cubic, uh, of this uh, quadratic function will be 10x, okay? Therefore, I hope everything is making sense, and then we'll meet on the next session. Thank you.